Hi friends, welcome back. You are, or should be, watching this video on April 15th, <clears throat> which is a Wednesday, and we are working on section I-2 in the reading strategies category of IXL for literacy, and it should be titled Reading Graphic Organizers or Read Graphic Organizers. This is not where you are or you are not um, at this point caught up with IXL. Go ahead and work backwards, watch some old videos and catch up and then come back to this one. I'm gonna ground us really quickly in what we've been talking about the past week and a half, which is that every single text we read has some sort of purpose. So if I'm writing a letter to my grandmother, um, informing her about my current life during this coronavirus vacation, that would be an informative piece. If I'm worried about grandma, and I want her to come live with me, then that letter would be a persuasive piece. I would name all the reasons why I think that she should come and <clears throat> try to convince her to live with me. If I'm writing because I have this really funny story to tell her about something that my dog did when we were stuck inside during coronavirus, then the purpose of that letter would just be to entertain her and to make her laugh. Every single text has a purpose. So as we're reading, it's really important to figure out what the purpose is first, because if we know the purpose, a lot of the other information comes along on its own. Obviously, we know that persuasive writing, the author is trying to convince you of something. Informative writing, the author is informing you about a topic or an event. There is five major types of informational text structures, and they're listed here. And lastly, obviously entertaining, the author's purpose is to make their reader happy or to entertain them, make them feel certain emotions. And today we're gonna to be looking at informational text, specifically graphic organizers, which are often found in informational text, so we can figure out how to read them. I've pulled up I2, it's here on the right side of my screen. And anytime you see a table or a graph or a chart, you can almost be sure that the text you're looking at is an informational text, that the author is using some sort of graphic representation with words to show you something or inform you about something. Okay, So obviously we already know, as we discussed, that when you see graphic organizers or any type of um, graphics that have headers, labels, um, charts, that is an informational text. So here on your author's purpose note-taking portion, which you should have written on your own page, go ahead and write the author's purpose is to inform. Now that we've labeled the purpose of this particular chart, because we know it's graphic organizer, so its purpose is to inform, we have to figure out what the topic is of this organizer. What are they talking about? What is the media that's being represented here? So I look up here and I see that it's given us some information at the top. It says this table compares, so that would be another way that we would know it's an informational um, text because comparing and contrasting is an element of informational text structure. So this table compares three stories about time travel. So as I look at my chart, I see that we have three stories listed here under this section. The header says story in these sections. These are the titles. One is Rip Van Winkle. One is a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. The third one is the time machine. The second row, we have a header that says setting. The first story is set in New York in the late 18th century. The second story is set in the medieval world of King Arthur's Court. And the third story is set in a future human society. And we can't forget this last uh, line here. <clears throat> the header says plot. We know that plot is an indicator of entertaining text, but the text we're reading is a graphic organizer. So we're still sure that it's informative. This is just telling us what the plot is of these particular stories. The plot of Rip Van Winkle is that a man falls asleep and then wakes up 20 years in the future. He soon discovers how the world has changed. The plot of a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court is an engineer that accidentally travels back in time. He amazes the people he meets with his scientific knowledge. The plot of our third story, The Time Machine, is an inventor creates a time machine which he uses to travel to the distant future. We have these three headings, story, setting, plot. The topic 
of this particular graphic organizer is listed up here. The topic of this organizer is it's comparing three stories about time travel. It tells us in the instructions. We're going to jot that down first and then look at our headings and labels. Now that we've written down the topic of our particular organizer, we need to look at our headings and our labels. Our headings are here at the top. This one says story, this one says setting, and this one says plot. So our table, which is comparing these three stories, is comparing them by looking at the differences in their setting and in their plot. So our headings and labels, we can go ahead and jot down the two things that are being compared about our three stories. Now that we know these are our headers, which tells us kind of what is being compared, we need to figure out what this graphic organizer is actually telling us. We know the point of the table is to compare three stories all about time travel. But as I'm looking at setting, every single setting is different. As I'm looking at the plot, every single element of plot is different, except that when people in the story are engaging in different events, they end up in a different time period. In the time machine, this inventor creates a machine, but he uses that to travel to another time period. In A Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, a particular engineer travels back in time and then comes back with new knowledge. And in Rip Van Winkle, this certain man falls asleep and then wakes up in a different time way in the future. Okay. So all of these elements of plot are different, except that the people all time travel. So we're going to jot that down here and the, the main thing this graphic organizer shows me. So on this part D of your note taking, it says the graphic organizer shows me that all three stories are set in different places and have different plot lines. In fact, the only thing they have in common is all the stories involve time travel. So we kind of know that that's our takeaway. That's what I'm seeing as I examine this chart. And I look at my question that goes with it and it says based on the table, which story is set in the 18th century? Well, this question is asking me to examine a particular element of our chart. I know that our headings and labels have story, setting, and plot. It's asking me about the setting, so I need to examine this middle column here that's actually labeled setting. For those of you who are hearing that, that's my puppy saying hello. So, hi, Tolly. And Mr. Jansen trying to get her to be quiet. Hi, Mr. Jansen. Um, this middle section is setting, so that's where we're going to look for our answer. It says, based on the table, which story is set in the 18th century? I'm looking in my middle section, and I see that Rip Van Winkle, for setting, says New York in the late 18th century. None of the other stories are set in the 18th century except for Rip Van Winkle. So I'm going to hit Rip Van Winkle and hit Submit, and that is correct. Now for this next one, you would do the same process. You would look at what the author's purpose is. We already know it's to inform, but we need to figure out what is it informing us about. We would look at the information above our chart to see if it helps us at all. We would then examine headings. Headings in this particular Venn diagram are these boxed areas. And then the last part is thinking about what this graphic organizer shows me. If you come across a Venn diagram like this, Recognize that anything in this left-hand circle is only about this label. So in this case, everything in this left circle would have to do with the Odyssey. Everything in this right circle would have to do only with the Ennead. And then this middle is everything that both stories have in common. Okay. In this case, it doesn't matter that you haven't read those poems. All they're wanting you to do is use the information in the chart to answer this question. And if they give you a chart, odds are the answer is there, but you have to figure out how to read that chart. Feel free to text Ms. Jansen or Ms. McCreary or Ms. Gordon or Mr. Johnson if you have any questions on how to read graphic organizers. As this is still pretty new, we wanna make sure that you know what's up. Have a good day, good luck.